Hi. 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 Good morning. Good morning. You're coming to listen to my lecture? Yes. Good. Where, 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 where are you listening from? Krakow. From Krakow? Krakow. Yeah. Oh, okay. And where are, you, are, you? Are, you, are you? Are you studying fashion? I'm yet to enroll, you know. Yeah, I enrolled last time, but I, I deferred the program, but I'm looking forward to future, maybe the nearest future to enroll. But. Okay. Okay. Which, which country do you come from? I'm from Ghana. Okay. Yeah. And you? I'm, um, I'm from, I'm uh, uh, speaking to you from Switzerland now, but I'm oh, also Switzerland. a teacher, a teacher at the Krakow School of Design. Oh, okay. okay. But I'm not there because of lockdown. Wow. Very sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. Maybe we'll, uh, in future, I'll look forward to see you in one of your lectures. Oh, there. thank yeah. you. <laughs> fashion has been, you know, I love fashion. Yeah. Yeah, I love fashion being the out. It's, it's one of, uh, it's a passion. It's part of my, you know, passion. I'm very, I'm very, very passionate about fashion. Good. Fashion design, yeah, very, very passionate. Yeah. Especially the clothing industry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very, very passionate about it. Yeah. Well, uh, Ghana is, is becoming very, uh, very famous now in, in, in the fashion uh, world. Yeah, um, absolutely. Many, many important things are happening in Ghana now. It's really absolutely. becoming a, yeah. one of the hot spots um, in, coming in up Africa. like um, yeah. Paris or, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We have certain designers, young designers who are coming up with yeah. different clothing lines. Yeah, very, very, very fascinating, very beautiful ones. Yeah. yeah. And we have certain industries with our local fabrics, like maybe the yeah. kente, the yeah. woodin, you know woodin? Yes, yes, yes. Woodin le crater. Yes. Yeah, yeah, something of this fashion, yeah. And then they design very, very nice styles, you know. Yeah, I think at, um, from, from what I, I've spoken to, to my students in, in, in West Africa is that they don't really want to use the traditional cloth because they think it's old fashioned. And uh, they want to use a European cloth, uh, European textiles. And I think that's a terrible shame because it is, absolutely. they should uh, be able to translate um, their beautiful, beautiful cloths, beautiful traditions, translate it into something modern. Absolutely. I think yeah. our colleagues in Nigeria are doing far better. You know, the Nigerians, you know, they, they, they use some of their fabrics. I think. Yeah. They are doing far better. It's high time Ghanaians to we start to take our own local fabrics yeah. and transform them. Yeah. You know? But as time goes on, now even uh, in Ghana, there's what we call every Fridays, like it's, there's a traditional wear in offices, wherever you go, yeah. people use the Africa, the, the local fabrics to, to, to go to work. They don't use suits. They wear suit work. They wear the local fabrics, a shed well designed with maybe uh, ATL material, ATL yeah. fabrics or woodin, certain certain yeah. product. Yeah, it's certain this thing. It's changing, but it takes time. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah, it's a, actually a mental thing. It's a mind. It's it, it's a mind um, set. But I think um, the whole world is going back more to traditional uh, dress and uh, folklore is becoming very popular. Folklore, yeah, is very in, in in Europe, um, folklore uh, people are going back to their roots. So it's it's a whole world thing. I think the idea of of uh, global fashion is probably changing a lot. You know. Yeah, it will change. Yeah. Yeah. And I was looking at, I don't know whether you have knowledge in, uh, you have deep knowledge on leather works, leather stuffs. Well, leather. the thing is, the thing, the problem with the uh, leather is that the treatment of, of the leather, leather yes. is not sustainable. Absolutely. And um, there are, are some countries, I think, uh, well, some of the major luxury brands, they do a uh, sustainable leather and um, then that's okay. But there's a lot of chemicals in leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the chemicals, they ruin the environment. Environmentally, it's environmentally yeah. unfriendly. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Especially the big industries. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a documentary in Italy where they do this leather work. 
yeah, you know, the tanning, the kind of tanning they do to the leather, the kind of chemicals they use on the leather. But I don't yeah. know, maybe there's a way. I also watched a particular uh, documentary whereby there's a lady very insp inspirational. She's using local material. She's looking, she's using the green, maybe yeah. uh, tree bags yeah. to tan. Yeah. Leather, yeah. you know, yeah, there's many there's um there are many people that use um plants, uh, fruits and vegetables um in um to, to make a sort of a leather a leather look, but um you may get a hundred percent sustainable um material. Some of it comes from pineapples or apples, for example, uh -huh. but you still have to put lacquer on on that. You still oh, have to you need to have to use lacquer and there, um, there you use the chemicals again. Oh, okay. So when you say that you've got a sustainable vegan bag, it's actually not because it's it has got chemicals um, on it. So it's difficult to come of a pure. It is very, very difficult to get a pure a pure sustainable um, ah. uh, product, but it will come. You know, we just early days now. It'll come. What do you think is the near future? The the, the industry, the leather industry in fashion. I don't know. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I can't really say, all I can say is that in Europe, there really is a turn away from eating meat. So there will be a turn yeah. away from less um, 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 animals. Less consumption of animal products, yeah, absolutely. We'll absolutely. have to see how, we, where that goes. Wow, wow, wow. Which means there's a bleak future in maybe in leather industry. Mm, I think it will change, yeah. It will change with time. Yeah. Because the the other thing is is that these um these these very modern inventions uh, of leather they they high tech, and um they they very um they last they last they they light they are strong, they last longer, so um the the modern uh, materials are actually long long lasting, you uh -huh. know, uh -huh. longer than 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 leather. Oh okay. But I, I, I don't know, we are, you know, the world changes so fast. Look, look what's happened to the world this, this year. Nobody predicted ah, it. Absolutely. So we, we don't know. Yeah, COVID has destroyed everything. Hi, but you're welcome. It, it's also brought new things. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's brought new ideas. <laughs> yeah, new idea. Yeah, absolutely new ideas. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is somebody on, on online there? Yeah, there's one Adam Yield, Yieldish. Okay. Is, is, is he a colleague of yours? Hello, Adam. No, I don't know him. Yeah, there's oh. another one too. Oh, hi. <laughs> okay. So don't have uh, many people yet. We'll just have to wait. Uh, are, are, you, are you actually at the school? At the moment, no. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm at home. Okay, so what 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 is Krakow home. like in, in in lockdown? Ah, boring. Yeah. Very less activity as it used to be. You know, yeah. Krakow is a very booming touristic city. Yeah, very, and then the cultural, you know, the cultural stuff. So it's like. The, you see very little, a very, very small number of people outside, especially during weekdays. Yeah. Very, very small number of people outside. Very few people are working outside. Most people are indoors doing online stuff. Yeah. And um, it's also getting very cold as well. Yeah, it's getting very cold. We are approaching winter, so definitely it's getting very, very cold. Yeah, temperatures are, you know, coming down, you know. Yeah. As we approach Christmas. So uh, how, how, how long will, will you stay in, in Krakow for? How long will I stay? I yeah. hope uh, in a year or two. Yeah, in two years. yeah it's really I'll tough. Yes. Yes. It's really yes. tough. I'm... The lockdown has made things. I know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, being a, being a foreigner is difficult enough, but in a lockdown, absolutely. it's absolutely an awful thing. It's very awful. It's, mm. it's very awful, you know. Mm. But we see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. It better. I learned the vaccines will be ready somewhere in January. I hope. In no. Europe, in Europe. I, don't so so. I read uh, Pfizer and one German company saying the vaccines should be ready in January. 
So let's see. Maybe uh, we we have to rush for the vaccine. That will maybe ease our problems a little bit. Yeah. Well, we hope uh, for a quick fix. All of us want the quick yeah, fix. So it's a, it's yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I found somebody to do online. Yeah. Um, hi, Binu, are you there? Hi. Hi. Hi, Binu. Hi. Where, where are you uh, talking from, Binu? Sorry? Uh, where, 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 where are you uh, talking from? I'm from uh, Poland now. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, we just have to wait until the others join, okay? Yeah, of course. Are, are you um, are you related to fashion? Are you? Yeah, I'm studying to fashion, um, Poland Karko Fashion School. Okay. Are you going to classes? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so so you you have some classes, or is it all locked down? Yeah. After this class, I have uh, seven classes in the school. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. And what 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 year are are you in? Um, sorry. Uh, what are, uh, is this? Is this your? Is this your a uh, first year? Is this your first yeah, yeah. year? My first year. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I just want to get my screen organized here. I get the first one. I think there's supposed to be one Ola Bogutska. Okay, somebody saw are, some man, yeah. Are you talking? I'm just trying. Yeah, there's someone is also online trying okay. to you know. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm not uh, sure what what is the time uh, whether whether you want to um, start. We'll we'll just wait a, a few a, a few more more minutes, and if anybody wants to introduce themselves or say something, it'll be really nice to hear from you. And then in a couple of minutes, uh, we'll we'll start. Um, but thank you, uh, thank you very much uh, for for uh, joining. It's uh, really really nice. Thank you. Oh, I see some of my students here. Elizabeth is there. Murat is here. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Morning. Um, I'm just... Um... Okay, so... Um... I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to. Uh, I have got something wrong with my screen. My my email seems to be dominating uh, my screen, but I guess it doesn't uh, affect affect you. Um, okay, just one second. Okay, there we are. All right. Um, so, um, are you are you all uh, uh, ready? Are you all okay? Uh, if we start now, will will this be okay? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think yes. I think yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So, I'm going to um, share the um, screen with with you now. Okay. And um, I'm going to like um, talk for a while and uh, about. Um, I've got you know quite a few topics. Maybe. Uh, three or four um, topics and um, I'll talk for a while on one topic and then we take a break and then it will be super if you could add your, um, your comments or your questions so that we can somehow, uh, um, somehow um, 
get something from this together and uh, exchange, have a little bit of exchanging ideas and so on. Because Zoom is so difficult because, you know, one person talks and the other people, well, I don't know what, uh, sometimes one can't concentrate so well and so on. But it'll be really great to, to be able to just, you know, say a few words because this can be helpful for, for other people and other people who don't like speaking can sort of be inspired by, uh, by people who, who are, who are um, speaking. Okay. okay. Excuse me, I think your microphone is closed, or I just can't. Yes, yes, I also can't hear you. Yeah. Uh, it looks like, Margaret, you are muted. Zoom shows that you are muted. Okay, C can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay, so yes. let's go back again. All right, um, so can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. okay so um, my name is, is Margaret and that's my WhatsApp number. And you're very welcome to contact me afterwards uh, about, um, about uh, questions and so on. So um, this talk is basically about how to find um, inspiration in, in, in daily things um, ar around, around you. First of all, we're going to have a look at some cliches and some myths about creative people. Um, um, the, the first one is that um, from the outside, most people think that creative people are lazy and um, they, they don't work. This is a, a, classical, um, mish and, uh, um, a classical myth and a classical um, cliche. But in fact, the truth is that creative people are the ones who, who make breakthroughs in art, in science, um, in music, in medicine and in technology, etc. And um, they, uh, creative people, propel society forwards, but they seldom get rewarded for for it. And um, the main <clears throat> the main reason for this is that um, <clears throat> is that companies and society need um, structure, and they need um, hierarchy, and they need uh, 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 rules and laws, and they need to put people in boxes. And when creative people work in big companies, um, they find it very, very, very difficult because of the terrible pressure and structure imposed on this. So this is one, one of the reasons why creative people um, are, 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 are regarded as wild and free. It's, it's, they, they're absolutely the opposite. The thing is that they are really unable to work inside a box. The other cliche is that um, creative people live in, in chaos. This again is, is not, is, is not um, um, true um, because um, the first step to creativity is to organize, to organize your own universe, to organize your ideas. And when you think about brainstorming, most corporate companies are always going to have brainstorming. But let me tell you, it doesn't work because brainstorming is, um, is about uh, mental, mental things, what, what you think about, what you think about something and you write it down. Brainstorming is not about feelings and about emotions and about in intuition. 
if you're in a brainstorming meeting in a company, it's very, very difficult to convey your emotions and feelings. So from that point of view, brainstorming with non-creative people is not very productive. And um, mm -hmm. brainstorming itself is uh, trying to make order from, from chaos. But let's go back to this painting. So it looks like chaos, but in fact, it's not. Because the painting that this person has on the floor is actually quite structured and, and, and organized. Even the paintings on the wall, they have a pattern and they have a structure. So one can see already that there is some uh, order and organization coming from all the paints on the floor. The cliche is that uh, creative people can think of an idea very, very, very quickly, um, which is partially true because the truth is that creative people have the ability to make cross connections between two elements that may not seem to be connected. And um, from this, they can create a third element. And it is this third element that is the, the creative thought, the creative thing, the creative idea. So that's the basis of creativity is this connection between two absolutely disconnected things and making them into something else. The um, other uh, cliche is that it's easy to design and anyone can do it. You just get um, some paper, you cut out a pattern, you, you just design a dress, you put it on a catwalk, it earns lots of money. That's absolute nonsense. <clears throat> when creative people are working, they work with passion because they love what they do. And this looks easy to others. Why does it look easy? Because the creative people are in a flow of energy. And when the creative minds and hands become one, the task they are doing looks very, very easy to outside people. The other myth is that creative people get famous quickly. <clears throat> There's no such thing <clears throat> as overnight success. Success takes years and years and um, so many failures, but because you love what you're doing, success does come, although you never, never know when. Another myth is that creative people always go to parties and everybody else has to sit at the office and work. <clears throat> creative people are passionate about their work and passionate about their life. And what makes a creative person stand out is in a crowd or within a group, is, um, is that creative um, people are always, always curious and they're always asking questions. This is one way that you can tell a creative person from another one. So let's just have a look at, at some, at some uh, ideas. Everyone is creative. This is absolutely not true. Creative people and non-creative people are very, very different. How, how is this possible? Because creative people, as I mentioned before, they cannot be creative under pressure, under structure, and under hierarchy, and they take great risks. They, um, they are able to, they, um, creative people are often made to, to feel stupid because nobody accepts the idea. So they are able to, to, to take it that, that, people are, that, that people insult them very often. And non-creative people really like structure. They, uh, they, they thrive in a hierarchy and they don't take risks. Non-creative people are essential for the running of big businesses and corporations and society. And creative people are essential for bringing new ideas and for propelling the society forward. So um, we, I'm going to go through um, this section uh, now, and uh, then we are. I would like to uh, to take a break and to to ask some questions. So we're going to have a look at um, at Sarah Burton, who is the creative director of Alexander McQueen. And um, she, um, this is about uh, her inspiration for the collection of uh, 2017. So one day, Sarah Burton was on her way um, uh, in England, uh, where, where she lives, uh, to go and visit a very famous uh, sculpture, sculptor called Barbara Hepworth 
uh, in the south of England near Cornwall. And on the way, she passed a, a cloudy tree on, on the road. Cloudy trees are very, very special. They are trees and everybody um, who, who wants to make a wish or whether they're ill or they want to find a lover or they want to be happy or want this or want that, they make a wish and they tie a piece of cloth onto the tree. Now, most cultures have something like a, a cloudy tree where people go um, either to a well and throw some, some coins or stones in and make a wish or else um, tie, tie their wishes to a branch, a branch. So this is what she saw on the way somewhere else. And she stopped. She took lots of photographs and lots of videos. This is a close up of the tree. You can see the, the bits of rag that were tied on, onto the branches. And every single one has got a wish of hope, of beauty, of success, of love, of healing. So the first thing that, that one does or that she uh, did was to make a, a inspiring um, visual board, a, a visual board of all the photographs and of all um, the, the ideas. She makes this very, very rich board as a reference that she's going to use as inspiration for the 2017 collection. Now we come back to, to, to brainstorming and I'm not talking about the way corporate people brainstorm, I'm talking about um, uh, concept development. And this is to identify uh, words that describe the feeling, the characteristics, and um, the tangible means that the things that you can touch and the intangible features, which are the emotions of your inspiration and uh, also called um, keywords. So here are some of the, of the words they wrote down, colorful, cloudy tree, wishing tree, folklore, um, desire, um, accentuated textures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They wrote all the words down that they thought was associated with this tree. And then they identified the most prominent words that they would use as inspiration for, for their collection. So this is what, um, what she wrote. Uh, my collection is inspired by the folklore um, 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 artisanal crafts of, from Cornwall. The colorful ornamental cloudy tree with its rags and ribbons opened up all sorts of decorative possibilities, concepts of, of, of artisanal embroidery, patchwork motives, flora and fauna are the key motive direction. The ancient rituals creates my ceremonial, ceremonial mood. Then the next stop <clears throat> was to collect hundreds and hundreds of photographs as inspiration. A lot of research was done in libraries and online <coughs> and locally as well. And then, then it was um, a matter of, of uh, designing fabric, designing the fabrics that was inspired by, by this tree and bringing in existing fabrics and, and innovating new fabrics that could be used for the collection. So basically you have, um, the, you have the concept, you have the tangible um, and elements mean, meaning the tree itself and the ribbons that's broken up into textures, colors, the silhouette shape. What would, what would the, the, the fashion, um, uh, what would um, the, the clothing look like, the silhouettes of the clothes and the, and the style lines? These start to become um, 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 identified. And here one can see, this is um, later after they've designed the collection and how well it translates from the cloudy tree into the colors that was designed for the collection. So once again, the, the process of designing a collection comes from the inspiring idea, the concept the visual boards, which are mood boards, concept boards, fabric boards, and trim and detail boards, design development, and finally, the collection. This is the process. 
but it all has to start from an idea. It never starts from uh, copying somebody else or taking somebody else's design and changing it slightly. That is the worst thing that you can do as a designer. Finally, we see the, the, the cloudy tree and one of the, of, of the clothes from the collection. And the result was a collection of dresses beaded with, sil with silvery trees, a white lace figured with kissing doves, medieval tapestries of flora and fauna, trailing threads, witchy symbols of stars and suns traced in black. And here to uh, finish off, we have another look at the collection that was inspired by the tree. Okay, so I'm going to um, uh, stop. Um, I'm going to uh, just ask you whether you would like to, um, to, to comment. Has anybody got anything to say about this? I have a question, but it's not about the runway, actually. It's about the um, thing you said before about creative people and stereotypes around them. Um, what if, like, can, can someone develop their creative side if, if they're not, like, born creative? Like, I don't know, you're a very rational, like, systematic person, but you want to work in a creative job to, I don't know, challenge yourself, can you um, develop that side of yourself? Or is it just, oh, no, you weren't born creative, sorry, you cannot. Um, it it depends. It depends what what side what side of 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 yourself do you do you want to develop? Because if you want to develop in business, I mean, business people are very very creative. The people who start um, um, businesses, they start new ideas and so on. And businesses is, is very creative. I mean, creativity is not just about art and, and design. So from your point of view, what would you like to, to develop if you were, you know, as you said, um, a, a logical person, what part of yourself would you like to sort of um, open up, shall we say? Um, you know, being able to see new things around you, like you said, um, this kind of connects to the runway where she saw the tree and said, yeah, this is my inspiration for a runway but it's like some people cannot do that can we develop that like being able to look around and see things yes. if we cannot of course every every everybody can can learn to to look and um and and part of of, of one studies as a fashion designer is uh, is when you are taught to to start to to look and um and um for uh, for, uh, for example we we do a, a course um where uh, where the students have to uh, collect uh, various objects and and put them in a composition and then they they do not draw the objects they only draw the spaces in between the objects and they use those those spaces, which are which are, are forms, and then they develop a pattern from from that. But by this is just one exercise when you're taught to to look in between things, and it's 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 training. And I mean, when one of the things you can do is just have an, a notebook with some pencils, which and color pencils or felt tip pens, which you carry around with you day and night. And whenever it, I, an idea pops up in your head or you see something, you photograph it and you draw it. And it's training. You just train yourself, you know, so that next time you, you know, you're, you're on your way somewhere and you pass that cloudy tree, you'll actually stop because, because um, you'll, you'll stop and you'll take a photograph because you've been training your, yourself to stop at, at look and look at things and especially when when you're with a group of friends and uh, you know you're walking along the high street and you want to stop because suddenly you see a um 
a, uh, a, a lamp, a lamppost that's got a pattern on, on it, uh, you know, or, or something like that. And you've got to stop and they've all got to stop while you take photographs and they think that you're stupid or just ridiculous. But those are the things that you start to, to do, you know. You photograph all sorts of things. Suddenly you become, suddenly your world is very, very rich and very interesting just from looking, but you have to look and write it down and photograph it. You know, it's oh, no okay. use walking past and saying, oh, well, that's cool and walking on. That's not good enough. Oh, okay. So like, it's like keeping a diary of things yeah. you find creative to yeah. inspire. Okay, thank you. Very okay, um, in, anybody else? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, my question is uh, when an innovative person was uh, when an innovative person is thinking, what's the first rationale behind it? Is does it does it have the sense of uh, marketing what is producing or what is uh, the fashion is going into, or he normally thinks of the inspiration that he derives from what he's doing? What is the first mindset of innovative persons? The first thing is that you're very very excited about what you see. Okay. It become very very exciting, and I have some. I've got two examples, uh, 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 two photographs which I took. One one was last week, and and one was a while ago. So uh, this is the whole thing. Um, c coming coming back to my example of walking down the street with your friends and seeing a pattern on on the lamppost. That pattern must excite you so much, and when you photograph it, you think, "Oh, great! I can use it." on a shirt, I can develop it. You have to be incredibly excited by, by what you see. Um, otherwise, it, it doesn't mean, mean anything. You constantly Which in is, state of okay. excitement. Sounds cool, isn't it? But anyway, it's more or less like, like that. Oh, okay, but they don't think of the marketability of that. No, that, that comes that comes that comes come last. later. Or or it, you you can think okay, so this this um this lamp post has got a, an amazing pattern. I can develop that uh, for some some fabrics or curtains, and I I can market it. Sure, you you can think like like that. But the first thing is, wow, that's just an amazing thing. The wow the wow factor. The wow factor, yeah, yeah, and and your um, people around you will will you know not been able to to see that, but that that's mm -hmm, not your yeah. problem. <laughs> okay, so shall we go on a little bit? Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so, um, oh, well, this is just what we've been talking about. It always starts with an idea. Creative people get hundreds of ideas a day. And uh, um, maybe you don't know this or maybe you don't realize it, but once you start to realize about how many ideas you get, you will be just totally amazed. But don't let them fly away. Catch hold of some of them and write them down and document them. Because the day will come when you have a project yeah. and, uh, and you can Im immediately go uh, to your own, your own ideas library and start um, developing an idea from there. So it's important to have the, the, this library. You can either make a file on your computer or else you can have um, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 notebooks, which you can just go into at any time and, and develop an, an idea from them. Here are some examples of what a notebook could look like. It's entirely up to you. Nobody else is going to be looking at it, uh, judging it. It's just your ideas. Only you know what the this, what this scribbles and the lines mean because they, they come from your imagination. So it's only you are able to interpret it. When it comes to changing your, your lifestyle and to becoming more uh, creative, it's very, very important to make micro shifts. Nobody has a major breakthrough and changes their life from one, one day to the next. Nobody suddenly becomes something or suddenly becomes this or suddenly becomes that. Whatever you do every single day accounts for the, the quality of your creativity and the degree of your success. 
So every day by taking your notebook and writing down your ideas, being slowly stimulated by what's around you, these are micro shifts and micro shifts are very, very powerful and very strong. So please be aware of them and use them because it enables you to become successful and really enhances your creativity. So let's look at inspiration from everyday things. First of all, you have tangible things, which are artwork, furniture, architecture, objects, flowers, technology, fabrics, etc. Then you have intangible poetry, movies, events, social movements, um, travel uh, and icons. So these are two different um, categories that can inspire you. This is sort of the main the main categories where where we get our our, our um, creativity um, from. So tangible ideas are those ideas that you can see and maybe you can touch them. So here's a sculpture. This guy's looking at it. The other one isn't. Who knows what ideas he is getting from the, the sculpture? Will it be a color combination? Will it be the pattern? Who knows? But it's a tangible object and he will probably get an idea. This is a, a, an idea. It's quite clear. It's from um, a cane chair in, into, into, a, in, into a, a, a garment for a collection. Victor and Rolf, um, they use the idea of deconstructing a painting as inspiration for uh, one of their um, collections. Architecture is always a huge, um, a huge and very powerful um, stimulus uh, to, to a collection. This is um, a classic uh, um, Indian architecture and how it can be translated, how the patterns can be translated into a modern dress. Um, and um, this is um, Hannah Su, a, um, a, a well-known fashion designer. She is uh, using this, a Scandinavian folklore as inspiration for her clothing. Here we have a painting. They're uh, using, the, using the painting as inspiration to make the pattern on the on a dress for a collection. Here we have another, an, another inspiration on the, on the left-hand side. She really has used the details of the flowers, the, the darker red spots and the shape of the, of the petals, the colors, everything has been interpreted in a very, very beautiful way, getting this uh, floral looking garment um, that has been a, a direct inspiration from a flower that maybe she saw out of her window or in passing or, or who knows where. Art is also an important um, um, inspiration for, for fashion. Art and fashion are very, very much um, connected with, with each other and they both inspire each, each other. Here again is, um, is art. Um, this is a, um, a, a spray, a spray painted, um, a um, caravan type type of, of structure, and then this is again it's been used in using also the same emotional co content uh, from from the caravan. Here again, painting how she's taken the tablecloth and interpreted that um, into into the dress in a very a modern a way using the colors from the painting also as her um, inspiration. Alexander McQueen was always inspired by nature. He was an absolute nature lover and all his collect collections are directly inspired by nature or, or the future. Princess Diana was an art, uh, was an art, an icon as we all know. And here is an inspiration of a pattern that she wore on, on one of her shirts it was inspired for a collection. Folklore is always an inspiration. It's always been interpreted. Oh, yeah, and um, and so that's um, very interesting. This is a, a Fabergé egg on the, on the left-hand side. And um, it is used uh, by um, um, 
um, Balma to for one of his um, collections, I think 2018 collection came directly from the pattern on the Fab Fabergé egg, which I think goes back to the 1700, I'm not quite sure. Very, very important, I can't stress this enough, please create your own library because you will forget about your brilliant thoughts. You have to write them down every day if possible. Now we're just going to go on to the intangible things, things that you can't touch. So here we have movement. We have the women's movement. Um, we have all sorts of political movements. Political movements have got uh, color. They all have their color codes and they all have an energy. And it's this energy and this color that designers incorporate into their collection. Street is very important what goes on in the street. All, all um, collections start from the, from the street. And the root is something like, like this. Somebody sees um, some, a weird looking person with these amazing clothes in the street. They photograph it, they blog it. Um, the uh, designers social media pick up the blog, see it think it's also great and weird and wonderful. They translate it into fashion. It goes onto the catwalk. And two years later, what was on the street is now mainstream. And that's how fashion starts always, right on the street, in front of your doorstep, in front of your nose. Even if you're living on a village, you might just see something that's going to relate to the future. That's why you need your camera, you need your notebook, you need your ideas. Here's Tom, Tom Brown, the fashion designer, was very inspired by the Japanese culture. That's how he interpreted intangible inspiration. And once again, you have to document your work and build up your, 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 your library. Here again, are more examples of what library that you can build up. So the greater your output, the more varied and the greater chance you have of a, of a breakthrough. That's all. The more you do, the more you get, the, the more inspired, um, the more like a designer you, you feel. If you like fabrics, please don't keep them in the drawer. Make little mood boards, put them on a mood board, keep them, stick them into your book, you know, get ideas going all, all the time. So... Um, creativity is a great, great a level. Level. Uh, nobody can own it, and it is never ever related to money, oh, or to status, or to class. Okay, so we're going to just uh, have a little stop there and ask whether anybody would like to ask a question. I'd be very happy to hear whatever somebody wants to say. Um, uh, I have a question. Yeah. I wanted to ask, how do you keep a uh, diversity in your ideas? Because I found uh, when I like something, that I make uh, my uh, other things that I do uh, kind of similar to it. So how can I keep the diversity in them? Sorry, um, you, you're saying that, um, from what I understand, you're saying that you more or less like the same things all the time and there's not enough diversity in, in your likes. Is this what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Well, I think you have to look at to see where you get your source of, 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 of inspiration. Are you always inspired by the same thing? Or can you be inspired by things that are really ugly and are not in your in your normal thing? You, uh, I'm just asking you a question. Do you think that you would be able to be inspired by things that you actually don't like, but are able to see some beauty in it? Do you think that would be possible for you? Uh, I think it will, but uh, I don't see very much of them in everyday life. <laughs> 
Well, the thing is, you know, you, you can do a, a very, very simple um, experiment with yourself. You can take a, like a crushed um, a Red Bull uh, can or a crushed uh, Coca-Cola can or, or, or a crushed cigarette packet, which do not inspire beauty, but you can look at it and you can see the, the crushed Coca-Cola can as, as a little sculpture. And you can have a look at the shapes, you know, how is it crushed? Look, look at the, look, look at the shadows it forms when it's all been crushed together and look at the angles and where the light falls on it. And imagine that you are able to make that shape in, in gold and think how great it would look um, as a sculpture in a, in a, in a museum or, or, a, or a gallery. And the same with with the, with 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 the cigarette um, packet. I mean, I I don't smoke, so I I I, I don't go looking for cigarette packets. But can you imagine that is also um, it's got text on it, it's got shadows, it's got um, the crushed packet will also have shapes on it. All these things you can photograph it, and then you can draw just the shapes inside the inside the packet where it's been crushed. So that's an example. Yeah, uh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so um, anybody else or shall we move on? Okay, we'll move on. Okay, so as as I said, um, creativity is 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 it's got no, it's got nothing to do with with your status in society or the money or or whatever. And um, the other great thing about is is creativity. It really hasn't got to do much about age either. I think this is the most beautiful thing about creativity. You know, you can be a creative when you're five years old. You can be creative when you're fifty. You can be creative when you're 90. It never stops. The older you get, the stronger it gets. And when you're much, much older, perhaps your body is, is fading away, but your creativity actually gets stronger and stronger. And I think this is the most beautiful thing about being a creative person. It never leaves you. It never deserts you. All you have to do is to maintain it and to keep it going every day by looking. So we'll move on, on now, and um, I, I want to um, bring in a, a personal example um, from my own experience. Um, I worked, um, uh, not, not so long ago, I worked for, uh, for International Architects, and um, we, we designed um, fashion boutiques um, in, in many, many cities in the world. And um, my responsibility was to was for all the colors and the materials and the patterns and everything else. So one one so we were doing a project, a luxury boutique in Istanbul. Istanbul is the most beautiful, li lively, vibrant city, mixture of many many cultures. And um, my task was to find um, a a modern uh, pattern for the floor. So what I thought of doing was to go to all the mosques and to take photographs of all the patterns in the streets and, um, and these beautiful um, Arabic uh, patterns, which I did and photographed and made drawings because I wanted to translate them into a modern pattern that we could use for the floor. This lasted for three days and I really didn't come to anything that I was happy with. And then I went to the Istanbul Modern Museum basically to have a rest and to have something uh, to eat. And I was walking around um, <clears throat> the, the museum. It had a lot of, of very famous um, um, Turkish artists and also international artists in it as well. And suddenly I came across this painting. It was by a Turkish, a very well-known Turkish artist. And I stood in front of this painting and it did something to me. I don't know what, what it did to me, but um, I was excited and I was inspired and I was full of energy for the first time after days and days of struggling to find um, something, <clears throat> I was inspired. So I contacted the artist. His name is uh, 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 Ahmed Oran. 
a very, very well-known Turkish artist with international clients and exhibitions. I contacted him <clears throat> and asked him whether he wanted to paint um, the floor for the boutique. And of course, um, it was um, a big business because he is a very famous artist. His paintings are incredibly expensive and um, a lot of negotiation had to be done. But eventually it was, it was done and he, and he decided. So he first <clears throat> made some samples on the floor was going to be a marble floor. We're going to do the backside of the marble. So it was sort of a, a matte um, stone and sampling and sampling and sampling for uh, many, many weeks. And eventually he started to paint the floor. And here he is um, painting the floor. You can see it's um, very complex and he had, he had assistance with him. I must say the systems also worked um, with him as well. And in a matter of a week, he, he finished the floor <clears throat> and he painted in, it in ink on stone. And on top of that, it was varnished so that the, so that the ink uh, wouldn't uh, rub off. And here's the store and there's the, the, the floor. And um, so this is what the floor looked like. So it really was a modern interpretation from a, um, a Turkish artist. So it was something of the Turkish culture into the floor in a, in a very modern way. So um, um, creativity has, has many um, dimensions. And as we've just discussed now, it's not just about art. It's not about um, uh, uh, fashion and videos. Creativity is business. It's about uh, entrepreneurship. Um, there are many, um, are many um, um, things. I mean, there's some business people who, who you know, who, um, who, who, who uh, instigate startups and so on. But the worst thing <clears throat> that can ever happen to anybody, uh, any creative person is, is that, um, is that when they are a child, you know, and some adult comes along and just tells them that they're not artistic and they can't draw. Well, this, this, this can really, really set so many children back when they're told right from their little that they just, you know, are not, they're just not artistic. And many of them shut down when they're young. So this is one, one of my photographs uh, from an exhibition of a um, Chinese um, artist. And um, I took this photograph and I found it really so stimulating and interesting. And I was so excited to stand there for a very long time and look at these bicycles because I saw all the potentials of patterns that you can make. I looked at the shadows that the patterns made on the floor. I photographed them, I took videos. I looked up on the ceiling, it was a glass ceiling and it also reflect the bicycles in it. So I stood there for a long time photographing and photographing and making little sketches. So this is one example that I found really, really um, interesting. And I used this idea later on from my sketchbook. This is a... Um, um, I have to um, go. Okay, this this is. Um, sorry, um, it's meant to be um, film, filming. Let me just go go back one 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 moment. Um, I was walking down the street uh, last week, and um, I passed a, a shop that had got these pieces of paper hanging in the window. So I thought it was absolutely amazing and I stopped him immediately because I thought what one could do with these pieces hang, hanging in, in, the, in the window, maybe you can use it for ideas for fashion or in a, in a large room as, as a room divider. So I took a tiny little video and here it is. Uh, it's not working. I'm so sorry, I don't know why it's not working. Let me try uh, again. Okay, so this is just a, a great, a great pity because what what the what the video shows is that all these little pieces of paper they were moving and moving and moving around and moving around. It was absolutely um, uh, um, amazing, and I I really uh, enjoyed 
the, the movement of, of these pieces of paper. And on closer inspection, it's two piece, piece, pieces of paper stuck together and they were sewn up with, uh, on, on a sewing machine and they moved around because the heat from the, the radiator un underneath the window made these papers move. And I'm so sorry that you can't um, uh, share it with me. Okay, so it's too bad, sorry. So would anybody uh, like um, to, to comment um, before we go on? <clears throat> anybody? Yeah. Okay. Um, about the, the work you did with the, the, the artist who was painting on the floor, right? Yeah. Um, was it, um, well, your, the work was already done, but the materials where, which he painted on, which was the tiles, I think because the, the shop already bought it, does that really mean you can do whatever you like with it? No, no, <clears throat> no. The 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 owners the owners of, of 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 the store commissioned him to 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 do that that painting on 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 the floor, and um and he had a problem because he had never painted on stone before. He tried to paint her with his normal paints, and it just came off. So he had to de to develop those inks. Those inks that he painted with, they were developed in a in an ink factory in Istanbul, so that they could be absorbed by the stone, but not but not just um, dis disappear com completely. So um, I'm not quite sure of, of 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 your question. So he he did paint the whole the whole floor, and yes, it does belong to the to the owners. Sorry, can you just say your question again? I I think I misinterpreted your question. So I was asking. I said um, the towels. I was particularly about the tiles, you know, and since the artist was able to paint on top of the tiles, you know, like uh, these tiles come from a different company, right? Yeah. Maybe a ceramic company. Yeah. And, uh, is it okay to do whatever you like with it because you already paid and bought it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was um, the... Um... So, um, because we, because, uh, because, uh, uh, because the architects that, that I worked with, they, um, they commissioned um, the tile company to put those tiles down. Okay, they paid for the, they paid the tile companies, the, they paid the tile company for their, for their tiles. They, um, and what happens to the tiles afterwards has got nothing to do with the tile company. And then on top, on top of that came the artist who did his artwork on, on the tiles. But the, the tile company does not own that, that painting. The, tile, the artist was paid by the owner of the shop and the owner of the shop owns the tiles and the artist's work because the owner of the shop paid for everything. Okay. Okay. And that work cannot, cannot be repeated elsewhere, right? Or else it's from the same owner, right? Um, well, it's impossible to 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 to, uh, to to repeat that that work. I mean, it was done by by this artist, and it, it, it everything that he did was a, a, a one-off thing. The the owner of the building can ask the artist to do the same work somewhere else or similar. The owner of the building can ask the artist to do the same work in a, in another building that belongs to the owner. Exactly, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and of course, uh, people people have tried to, to copy this 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 idea, and and it hasn't worked mainly because of those inks. Those inks were developed uh, for the for this this project, and 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 this is the, the, this is the. This is the and uh, this is this is what what happens a lot. Um, when you when you're working on a project and you start to develop something and it doesn't work, it leads you to innovate something completely new. And I think that that, that artist could have developed those paints and 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 I I don't know maybe he he has got a copyright on them. I have no no idea what, what went on, but you know things develop from a project. Okay. Anybody else like to add? Okay, let's move on. 
Um, okay, so um, I wanted to say that systems and hierarchy do not nurture creative people. And this is why creative people find it really impossible to go uh, and do a job in an office or to do jobs yes, that... Sure. Or to do jobs that require um, routine and other people telling them what to do. It's really, really hard for creative people to work under those conditions. Many of them get sick or they lose their creativity or whatever. So if you can possibly help it, stay away from systems and, and hierarchies. This was a address that was created um, by the students from Central Martins um, in, in, um, in, 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 in London. It was created, uh, they did a life drawing class held at the Alexander McQueen flagship store uh, in, in, in London. And they had to create a pattern on a dress um, and they had to create a, a dress as well that was inspired by a dress called the Ophelia dress. And um, so they had to use um, aspects of this dress and create something completely new. And this is what all these students are, are doing there. So they turned the, the illustration from the dress into a, a garment. And then the final artwork was mapped out and transformed into a pattern that formed the base of the dress. And then they made these tiny little maquettes, which is about a 30 centimeters high of what the dress would look like. And uh, to give an idea of, of perspective. They also did enormous amount of embroidery on the dress. Here um, are these tiny uh, paper um, ma ma maquettes uh, Showing um, what the where uh, showing the what the dress would 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 look like or part of the, of the dress, and they were also taught a lot about embroidery and how to do chain stitch, cross stitch, herringbone, and French knots, and how to embroider on a pa how to embroider the the pattern. So this is one of the dresses that was created from Irish linen and it underwent four separate constructions. One, one was the, the toile um, uh, fitting and three separate lin linen versions. And the process was trial and error, playing with different weights and, and sheens. So this is just to show you also another, another um, creative uh, pr process starting, starting from drawing uh, from uh, starting as this as inspiration and over a period of weeks with embroidery and pattern cutting, turning it into um, a, a dress for a collection. So in order to be successful, you need a network and you need collaboration with other people who have the skills that you don't have. There may be, there are skills that we do not have and this is not the time to learn to learn new new skills. Rather, collaborate with people that do have those skills. And then, on top of that, finally, you need a product, or a garment, or a collection that is in demand and that people want. If people don't want it, you can just forget about it. So you have to have a, a feeling for the zeitgeist, and the zeitgeist mean a feeling of what is to come. These are the three in, in, ingredients. Um, your own creativity, a network of, col of collaborators and a product that is going to be in demand. So let's look uh, uh, once again, this is our last section on what inspires us. So Carl Lagerfeld- um, Can I ask something quickly before? Sure, sure. One, Can one I more. ask something before we move real quickly? Of course. Yeah. Um, you said to stay away from hierarchy because it would limit our creativity. What if the um, reason of that hierarchy is to improve our creativity? Like, for example, cool. Not every task is easy to make, but you have to make it to be able to graduate. That's how the system works. But then there are things like fabrics you don't want to work with, but you have to, even though it doesn't really 
make you feel creative or subject you have to work on even though you're not inspired by that subject how do we get over this struggle to improve ourselves well i think i think that's a struggle that all all students have or or that not not just students is 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 that you you feel as though you've been forced to do things that that you don't want to do but um um but uh, you, you know as 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 future fashion designers you you have to accumulate tools and you have to accumulate skills so these are the things that that somehow you have to find a way to overcome but i'm not talking about that hierarchy because what you're talking about is is learning skills some of them are difficult some some of them are easy some of them you love some of them you hate i'm talking about hierarchy in a in a corporate company where 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 you're not allowed to take responsibility where you are are not allowed um, where your p- opinion is is not counted where you have to ask um, permission in order to to talk about a a, a good idea where you being um, uh, uh, judged and uh, where, where there is a, a definitely a, a, a hierarchy when you're at the bottom and you have to somehow move yourself up up into I'm talking about corporate companies now or, or, or in, in an office or whatever. Creative people only do well in big companies when they are at the top, when they're not being watched and they are allowed fr- freedom, fr- freedom to to construct their own daily lives and freedom to create. But at the bottom of the, of the hierarchy, in the bottom of, of the pyramid, the creative people, is, it's an absolute hell for a creative person. So that's quite different to what you are, you, well, what, what you are struggling with. More and and going going away from your creative block or, or going into nature or going to a party or what, whatever um, can can help you. But uh, we all we all have creative blocks. If each, each and 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 every one of us have creative blocks is actually part of of being a creative person. And each person has to find their own solution to uh, overcoming a creative block. What, what, I, what, what works for me may, may not work um, uh, for, for, for you, but you have to, you have to find it because, because you just have to do it. But I know forcing, <clears throat> forcing, uh, forcing it through a block doesn't work either. Some people, some people don't work for uh, a year or two, but as a student, you can't, you can't do that. So you have to be innovative. There's a lot of literature written about creative blocks. You can really inform yourself. You can really inform yourself because it's a mental thing, and uh, you have to have to you know look look at yourself. Oh, okay, and um, okay, thank you. Thank no, you. no, no, carry, carry on if you want to ask. It's nice that you take taking oh, part. I don't want to like keep people waiting for the rest. Of no, you're the not. You're not. You're no, not. no, 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 okay. you're not. Okay, cool. Um, when you said uh, it's like a mental thing, what about like mental issues? I feel like they are both an inspiration, but also they do cause you to like stop working because you don't feel good about anything at some point when you're going through like problems. Do you think like that's uh, that's something you should overcome or learn to? live with to be create to be successful in a creative area <clears throat> i think what can help you is is to read a, about uh, creative people who have who have had mental problems and mental blocks and how they've they've over, overcome come them and um the majority the majority of of creative people have this problem and um mm-hmm. there is a lot of 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 of, of literature that uh, uh, you can you can um, read. Um, I don't know uh, whether you saw the a Netflix film about is it Zach Zach Paulson? Oh, forgotten his yeah. His, 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 yeah. 
So he was, um, you know, a very, 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 very successful American designer, went to Paris and so on. And um, <clears throat> and uh, later on in, 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 in an interview, I mean, he really had severe, severe mental problems and uh, had to stop working for a while. And it's, uh, it's very interesting how, how he overcame his problems. If you look at, at most, uh, most um, uh, create, creative people, most designers, product design or fashion design, you'll see, if you look, look into their biography or things that have been written about their lives, they, nearly all of them have problems and they all find ways to overcome them, to stop and start their career or whatever. So you're not alone. You really are not alone. I think even, even people today on, on the Zoom, many, many, many people on the Zoom also uh, have similar problems. So you're not alone, really. Just Thank have you. to find yeah. your way out or in whatever. Okay. I have a question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my question is, uh, uh, with your vast experience in creativity, an art industry, which of the two do you think uh, is more appealing to public? The modern art or the contemporary art? Well, as a creative person, you don't really care what's appealing or not. As a creative person, it, it, it only matters to you what appeals to you whether you are contemporary or modern or, or whatever, it really, it's, it's um, other people's opinion do not count. The more creative you are, the less other people's opinions matter. And I think that's the, that's the great thing about being creative. You're not influenced by, by trends or what other people think that you should do. And there are plenty of those, let me tell you. You're only interested in what appeals to you. That's all I can say. Okay. 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 So um, I have to um, finish off soon. So um, uh, we'll um, just uh, finish off very, I'll go through this very quickly because we have to finish soon. So um, Karl, Karl Lagerfeld uh, was very, very much inspired by, um, by the film, the Fritz Lang film, Metropolis. Uh, um, and it, it's about man and, 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 and the machine. And um, so man and machine, these are two, two opposites, of course. Man and the machine, it's quite clear that they are, are opposites. This film was made in 1927. It was the first film about the future and about the, about the, 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 the power of, of machines and so on. So I'm sorry, I have to, to go through this quickly. So um, Karl Lagerfeld um, designed um, a, uh, a wedding dress um, for the pregnant bride. Very, very classical, very beautiful, made uh, from, um, from natural, uh, beautiful fabrics. But he had a like um, a, a extremely long train, which you can't see. I think it was several, several meters, maybe 10, 10 meters of train. And um, he used um, as the pattern, he translated a, a classical pattern, which was a computer generated classical pattern. And this was the, the, the mixture uh, between the machine or the computer and, and traditional and the traditional fabrics. So here we get this, um, this, um, this counterbalance between um, computers and, and, and fabrics. And here again, um, in, in a different collection, but, but, but also on the same theme was 3D pr printing. So we have traditional fabrics mixed with 3D um, a, a printing. And this is an, an, an example of, of that. Also inspired by um, the Fritz Lang um, film from 1927. So I'm sorry I had to finish so quickly, but um, that's uh, what I have to say for today. And I would uh, can only say that um, if you can just be in the moment, be focused and to follow your heart. Okay. I think still we have like around 15 minutes or 20 minutes because I think it was a mistake. 
Yeah, yeah it was a mistake. It's supposed to be 11.30. Yeah. Okay. So we have still time. Okay. Right. But <laughs> I think they are giving a sign yeah. that we should end. After no. rush. I don't know. It's supposed to be 11.30. I think it's a mistake. We're supposed to end the class at 11.30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, so it they've written like that. So still, I have 20, 20 minutes, yeah. This okay. correction. Okay. So, so we so can now, continue. Well, okay. So um, what, what, now is, is, is a chance for, for somebody to to uh, uh, say uh, uh, something or, or to comment would, would be very nice now that we suddenly have some time. Um, uh, um, yeah, so if somebody has to, has to say something or, or to add to it so that we can also think about it or learn, learn from it. Maybe I would like to add something because I think generally the point is like, at least for myself, sometimes I'm having a lot of ideas, but this is just a point. Like, <clears throat> I don't know how to start to draw with those. Okay, so just just give me an, an, an example. Like, what, what, just, just give me a simple uh, example and, and let's, let's find a solution. An, an idea about what, say? Just give me one example. It's hard to explain as an example, example but I, I'm not trying to say about drawings, just I'm trying to imagine it. Like, Okay, for example, you saw one point and it's good for inspiration, but uh, you cannot find any way to improve it. Like, okay, it's staying in front of you. For example, as you said, like a Coca-Cola jar. Yeah. Okay, it's staying in front of you, but you have ideas to create something, but you don't know exactly what. So I, I, I would suggest to you that you start to draw that uh, Coca-Cola uh, uh, jar. And, and I don't mean uh, do a fantastic drawing. I mean, just make a little sketch in your, in, in your book. As you start, as you have your finger on, on the pencil and you start to, to draw it and to get into that Coca-Cola can, and ideas, ideas will, will, uh, will come. And, and even if, if they don't come, you can write there, the, the you can write what the shape look looks like maybe it looks like an an, an upside down um, horseshoe or a stone or whatever you write in your little book what it looks like you you write a note of all the colors and so on you you have to make a connection with that thing that that inspires you or take a photograph of of, of it take a photograph and and draw it it's only with practice it's only with practice your little book nobody's ever going to see your your book so you have to start making your own uh, language, your own. It's, it's like you, you're building up your own uh, design language that belongs to you. It can just be a squiggle or something, but you'll know where it came from. So, um, so and, and this, is, this is the thing about having, having your, your little book and, and making drawings in, in it, is that, is that you can... Is, is that if, if, if you're in a situation where you have to design something, you can think back or look back at the books and ideas from, from your little book will help you in your design process. You know, it's, this is not an intellectual exercise. It's all intuition and all from the heart. And it's no thought. You can't start um, blocking yourself by saying, um, I can't draw the Coke can. Um, I don't know how to draw this. I don't know. It's nothing to do with intellect. It's got to be totally, yeah, from your heart. That's, that's all I can say. And maybe somebody else would like to add because it's a problem that everybody has. So it would be so great if somebody else could also add to, to Idem. Thank you. To add to that, I think maybe there are certain books that's uh, can help him to draw. There are certain balls where maybe you can start from the children's drawing books, something of that sort, at least start from there, something of that, sort. yeah. You can start drawing. It can help him a lot and then advance from there. Yes, but, um, 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 but um, uh, Adam, you don't, you don't have to draw. You don't always have to draw. You can make a collage. You can yeah, just actually, like uh, actually I, I, I tried to mention about uh, drawing like uh, not exactly drawing like about taking steps 
I mean, like starting from starting point. Okay. Take away from with that because, for example, okay, I don't want to draw some things, especially, but as an inspiration, like to take uh, some way with that. For example, I'm uh, interested in with photography. Sometimes you see something good, and okay, you are saying it can be used in good to uh, some kind of concept. Yeah. Yeah, and after from this point to take some steps to improve it. Okay, so so you are you are saying that because because you like uh, photography, you 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 uh, um, you always or you automatically take photographs of things that inspire you. Yes. Yes. But um, but if I understand your um, your question pro uh, properly, is that you you don't know how you're going to use that inspiration? Is is this what is, is this what you're saying? Like exactly, I'm trying to say how to improve those ideas. Okay, I understand. Because uh, mostly, like I'm struggling with that. Because when I check, for example, as you said, those uh, sketches, etc., like notebooks. I have some ideas, but it's hard to take step with that, like to improve them. Because sometimes you are trying and you are failing with that. So like you are losing your motivation for that one. So you are moving another one. So um, what what kind of, um, uh, uh, um, what, uh, okay, so what kind of, projects would would just give me an example of a project of, of, of a task that may be given to you just give me an example of of somebody wants some some kind of photography for you, uh, from you just give me a um, an example no for example like I, I i love street photography also i love like portrait photography yeah mostly i'm using like black and white yeah so sometimes like some ideas are appearing like to use this street photography with, with portrait. For example, I love shadows. I yeah. love like like generally like this uh, mix. I yeah. mix them. So like there is nothing specific to explain, but to mix them. As you said, there are two templates, two stuff, and to have some ideas to connect them in creative way. Something unique. Don't you think that you probably do this anyway? I no. I, 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 I have a, a, a feeling that that you 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 probably I, I'm I'm sure that you probably have a gift with 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 these shadows. You probably you 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 like them. Uh, you you photograph them a lot. I don't. I I think you you may just do it. But it's maybe just totally normal to you. And you're thinking now that um, that that your ideas are, are, are not good enough or, or, or interesting enough, but maybe you, you just do it naturally, and okay. and I and you don't and you don't give yourself credit enough credit for for that. Maybe you're right. Just uh, my point, like I would like to improve them, and sometimes I'm pushing to do that. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I mean, I mean, it it really is such a. Um, uh, I wouldn't say a negative, but but it is this this negative thing that we always have to strive and make ourselves better and better and better and better. You know, it's such a stress. It's such a pressure on ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the way you are and what you do nat naturally is really, really, really okay. And you just have to you look at your work and see what other people like in your work to see that you do it naturally. Because you do it and naturally, it doesn't seem like work. It doesn't seem that you're making any effort because it's it's um, 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 natural. You know, it's the same. It's the same as um, well. I, I mean, some. Um, it, it it for you is just as normal as being able to 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 brush your hair or whatever you do. It you don't think about it, and I think that's really great, and. I think you should really congratulate yourself rather than tell yourself that you can do better. That's my opinion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your help. 
Well, I'm a bit helpful, but I, I mean, I can see with 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 your photograph on your on your on your screen <clears throat> that it has a lot of interesting shadows. The shadows make um, very nice shapes and so on. And so you've chosen that that photograph to to represent you on the screen. <clears throat> so these are things that are normal for you. I would never be able to 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 play around with shadow like that. It would take me maybe years to to get to this degree of what you just do, you know. You just just do it like uh, just so normal for for you. It's just so normal, and other people, it's not. It's it's a big it's a big effort. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. Thank you so much for your okay. Would anybody else like to um, say something? So um, if nobody else is um, going to be saying something, then um, I think that we'll, uh, we'll um, stop now. And um, I would like to thank you uh, all very, very, very much uh, for being part of, of this. It's so great uh, to, to see you all. And um, I hope that I have been helpful. And if you want to ask me any questions or communicate with me, I'm open for that. So uh, please don't, don't hesitate. Thank okay. you very much. Thank Can we get these slides? You. Thank you very much. Can we get Thank access you. to the slides? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Ciao. Ciao.